Welcome back to my channel. It has been a little while since I have done a makeup get ready with me style video. I actually have two photo shoots this week and I don't know about you, but anytime I like try to do new things before I have something that's like important, it always gets messed up. So I figured, why don't I just play with some makeup today and see how it comes out so I know how I wanna do my makeup for these photo shoots this week. So let's just, you know, hang out, grab a little snack, your iced coffee, whatever, and we're just gonna chit chat, talk some new makeup, talk life stuff, you know, just be like girlies together. <laughs> and welcome to today's video. So prepping my face, I think I mentioned this in Jan my January favorites video, but this Tula H2 Oasis Instant Skin Reviving Mask. Like, can we just talk about, this is nothing other than this on my face. I actually leave it on longer than you're supposed to, and I let it sink in and just wipe away any like globs. But this is, I don't understand how this doesn't pill. It's fantastic, and it makes my skin like so plump and supple and just, we love it. That actually, do this as more of like a makeup-y style video today instead of like just get ready with me chatty just because I haven't really done one in a while. And you know me, I love my makeup. I'm a fitness girly, but I do love a good makeup routine. Like new products, new Sephora. <laughs> And I just, I'm such a beauty girly too. Like, I think I missed my mark on the beauty girly YouTube era, but you know, it just, this just doesn't mean that fitness girls can't be beauty influencers, okay? So we're starting out with the e.l.f. poreless, no, this is not poreless, sorry, primer, power grip primer. And this I like because it really, really makes your makeup last. But I want to experiment today with mixing a little bit of this rare beauty. This is the poreless primer, kind of a jelly consistency as well. But what I'm gonna do, is just put this on like the parts where I want them to be a little bit more covered and poreless. So like kind of my T-zone area, my, oop, there's a pill. Just kidding. I got a pill. A little bit of my forehead down the nose and I'm going to just kind of tap this in and let it sit. While that is drying, I'm gonna go in with my, this is a ride or die brow product, and I have literally tried them all. When I tell you I have seriously an entire drawer of eyebrow, just everything that you can think of, and the NYX Clear Brow Gel is the only thing that makes my eyebrow hairs stand up completely, be nice and uh, full without getting that weird like white kind of shadowy mess on them, you know? I also just like take my finger and kind of press them up so that they're really, just really glued to my skin, you know? Have been recovering really well from my surgery for those that have been asking. I think that like you can kind of see a bit more resemblance of what my under eyes looked like before I had filler. Like I just genetically have really, really sunken in under eyes. It's just, it is what it is. It's nothing that I'm gonna ever change from now on. But I think that I'm, just healing really well. I did have some cortisone injections put into my scars not too long ago, and that seemed to really help. So, I don't know, we're still, we're on the journey. It says like three to six months for the total time of healing. What I am gonna do though, is do a little bit of color correcting around my eyes before I go in with any concealer or foundation or anything. And this is just the NYX color correcting stick. And I'm gonna put a tiny little bit on these inner corners because that's where I personally have the most darkness. And then we're gonna take the green one for the little outer redness because this just seems to be where the scars are the most red. I am definitely noticing that my like slight bit of retraction on the left is healing. He said it would. I guess when you get lower blood plasties, like that's probably the biggest concern for most people is that retraction. But he was saying to me that like, um, as long as it's not folding your eyelid, it's not a problem and it will heal on its own. Eyelid's definitely not folding. It was just a lot of the scar tissue was kind of pulling it down. So I'm excited to see hopefully how that looks once it heals. See, this is what this is why I test this stuff, right? So that primer, that Rare Beauty primer, it looks really nice, but it definitely is pilling just a tad. I've also been using a red light under eye like little sunglass kind of thing. I think I'm gonna include it in my February favorites because I do feel like it's really helping with that under eye skin. I don't know that it's like maybe a placebo, 
or it's maybe complete bullshit, but I don't think it's hurting anything. I personally like to do my brows before I put any foundation on because I feel like my skin is not like slick. So I'm gonna use this Precisely Brow Pen. I do really like the Kosas one. I think that tip is a little smaller than this. But what I do is just like kind of gently draw in some hair strokes at the front here. Did just laminate my eyes, like literally this morning, my eyebrows, so. And then I, I do not grow hair like in my little arches here. So I like to just kind of make this like connect the front part to the end, you know, just because I don't have thick brows like that. Fill them in like so. So that, that is literally all I do to my brows these days. I'm trying not to do them too much, but still so they're full and look kind of fluffy. The problem with having tattooed brows or powder brows, whatever you want to call it, is I cannot really get that like full hair stroke kind of fluffy look because I have that base of the ink on my skin. And that is something that I feel very passionately about just as someone who's like heavily tattooed. Powder brows, microblading, whatever you want to call it, it is literally a tattoo on your skin. So if you have fine line tattooing over years, guess what's going to happen? It's going to blow out. People don't realize this and uh, artists that provide this service, a lot of times they just tell people like, oh, it only lasts a year not necessarily the case. Why is it that I have had so many of these things that people are like, oh, it only lasts X amount of time. Just kidding. I am the one that ends up having it forever. No, but seriously, if you have tattooed brows, just understand that anytime you are going into the skin, whether you're slicing it with that type of like blade, or if they are using a tattoo gun, you are still opening the skin and depositing ink into the, the lower levels. And that is going to create a somewhat permanent effect depending on how deep they go. If they are using like a true traditional tattoo or they're cutting the skin deep enough, it is going to be like a permanent tattoo. So just keep that in mind. And the reason why that's important is because when you have lines tattooed over time they blow out they turn gray it's just a part of tattooing it's totally natural but it's important to know because it's on your face i think i'm gonna just go in with the oldie but a goodie the house labs triclone silicone foundation i just really i love my fenty stick but i think that that's a little bit more of a light coverage and to me this house labs foundation is just the perfect like full coverage, but still looks like skin. Oh my gosh, I seriously am obsessed with this foundation. I feel like this is the foundation of the year of last year and probably will be of this year because I've not seen anything come out that it is even remotely as good as this. Just like, look at the way that that blends in my skin. Now I know, I know the shade, the shade difference, okay? But I am trying so desperately to get rid of this spray tan. <laughs> that I had last week and it was just taking its sweet time to fade. So I know it doesn't look so hot, but we're gonna, we're gonna bronze it up with a little uh, bronze air, so not worried about it. Like the crazy thing about this foundation is you literally do not even need that much. Like it just is like, just, oh, it's so great. I've also recently, instead of just putting the contour stick on my face, I've been taking it directly from the product, and this is the Rare Beauty one in Good Energy. It's a little bit darker because I am gonna be using it as a contour. And okay, so recently, you know, all of the girly pops on TikTok have been putting their contour on their uh, cheekbones, like on them instead of underneath how we've always been taught. And you know, I've been trying to do that for a while, but I will say, I do not feel like it pulls my face up as much as it does for them. Maybe because they have different face shapes. I don't know. But I just feel like I have such a round face that I kind of need to put it in my, in my actual, you know what I'm saying? I'm going to do that today and see if it kind of works in my favor and a little bit up on the forehead. I am definitely pilling right now. I put way too much product on under my primer. See, like, I just feel like this kind of gives me a more sculpted effect. I don't know. Let me know what you think on camera because I just feel like the on the cheekbone thing is just not for me. It doesn't work for me. <laughs> thing. I contemplated making this video today because I was like, nobody cares about YouTube anymore. Like TikTok is becoming long formatted videos again. They want, they want horizontal. They want, and I'm just like, you know what? I don't care. I'm just gonna do what I wanna do. And if anyone wants to follow and watch, like, please, it would make me so happy. But I am so tired of doing things on 
social media just to kind of like keep up with the trends. I just, I don't want to do that anymore. I want to just do it for me. And so that's what we're going to do today. Debating between the pretty peachy nudie stick and the uh, NARS orgasm blush. And I'm going to go with the NARS. So we're going to take this literally the smallest pump because this shit is so pigmented. And I'm going to put it directly above that contour. And I'm going to use the Rare Beauty blush brush. I really, really like this blush brush to kind of press this into the skin and pull it upwards. Now, I do like to put the blush on my cheekbones for this and pull it up a little bit higher. I feel like that looks good on me, but the contour there, I don't know. It's just not, it's just not it for me. What do we think of this? Do we like this? I feel like this look looks really looks really nice it's like really easy too like this is definitely i would say my go-to photo shoot ready look but i'm also kind of testing out a few things so i know what works and what doesn't and i'm gonna go in with another oldie but goodie this is the born this way Too faced no yeah Too faced born this way multi-use sculpting concealer and i am in the shade vanilla another thing recently is that i feel like i've been doing too much concealer so i am going to be very very uh, conservative on my concealer placement today. I'm going to also use my Hourglass Little Concealer Brush. This is like the best concealer brush of all time. Because the other day I went to use my Beauty Blender when I was putting on my concealer and it literally just pulled everything off my face. I had to wipe off all the makeup and do it over again. I was so angry. This is giving. This is definitely giving what I want it to give and I'm not gonna put any um, mascara or liner on the bottom of my eyes still just because they are healing and I don't, I actually singed off, not me, but the surgery singed off my bottom lashes. So I can't really do anything to them anyhow. So we're just gonna leave that as is and that's why I have the Lashify on today. People often ask me if I still use it and anytime you see me have like full lashes like this, just know that it's Lashify. I also have tried so many other like off brands of the at-home eyelash extensions and I just always, always go back to Lashify. I know they're a little bit more expensive but that's kind of one of those things where I feel like you really do get what you pay for when it comes to that. Before I do any other type of powder or anything, oh, that was not even. Ugh. Taking a little bit of MAC Fix Plus to kind of melt in the cream products to my skin before we do anything else. And then this has also been something that I've wanted to try recently because I do have Miss Charlotte Tilbury's Pressed Foundation Powder, Airbrush Flawless Filter Complexion Perfecting and this, oh, I forgot to use my stinking brush. You know, that's what I wanted to do is I really wanted to use that brush today and I forgot, bummer. Okay, we're gonna take this Morphe M536 brush in the Charlotte Tilbury press powder and we're gonna go in under those under eyes first with a press powder on a brush. And I feel like that just helps kind of smooth out and blur and give a nice little base to work with before we put the loose setting powder on top because I am using more of a pink powder for that. These little puff guys, by the way, are just from Amazon. They're so super cheap and we're gonna use Miss Huda Cherry, oh Lord, that was literally so much. Cherry setting powder and I do also press off the excess because I'm not trying to look like a complete cake face. And then we're going to gently press this into the under eyes and pull it upwards to over the scar to kind of cover that. This honestly photographs so nicely, like truly so wonderful. And it's not too pink, but I do like having a nice pink under eye. We love it. Maybe I'll just use that brush for the powder now that I'm gonna go in with some of my powder products. This is the Patrick Ta Double Ended, the contour and blush brush. Actually, my friend bought this for me because she comes to the gym with me and because I pay for a membership and I get to bring a guest, so she gets to come for free. So she, she knew I wanted this brush so bad and she bought this for me as a gym present. I'm gonna take some of this Fenty bronzer and I'm gonna use the contour and just kind of reinforce where I bronzed over before with that stick. Oh my gosh, this patch on my neck, please. <laughs> Lord. Okay, this is nice though. This is, I really love this Fenty bronzer so much. I wanna get the cream stick, but 
I have way too many cream stick bronzers. It is out of control. Then we're gonna actually take this blush from NARS and this is in the shade Gaty. This is like a true baby pink, like doll color. I will say though, the payoff on this is very, very sheer. The way that everything just sits on top of that, um, this, I'm, I'm just shook. It is so like lit from within and I really don't even have that much. I didn't even put a moisturizer on. I literally just used that. Still riding for the cookie highlighter. If anyone else has a better highlight situation for me, please let me know. But truly, I cannot find one that I like more. We have hit pan on this guy and it is just, it's just too freaking good. And I've tried the like cream ones as well, but I don't like the way that they sit on top of, look at that, ooh, I like the way they sit on top of the powder, you know? Then we're gonna go in with the Morphe Continuous Setting Spray. Really just reinforce that all together. Look at the skin, for real. And I have been letting this sit on my lips. This is the Lawless uh, Filter Overnight, Filler Overnight. Hydrating, plumping, smoothing, for, oh, forget the filler. <laughs> Lip mask, and I like to do that while I'm doing my makeup, so it kind of just like sits and makes them a little bit more fuller. I'm gonna go in with some lip product, and also, one thing I did not do though is prep my eyes, so I'm not gonna mess with this, but I do really love these colors in the Pat McGrath Labs little mini palette here. Like, look at this, and honestly, her, oh my gosh, the payoff. Like, it's just, look at that. So creamy, so soft. Oh, I love it. I really need to do an eye look with that, but I don't wanna do it when I have Lashify on my lashes either because I feel like you can't really see. MAC Whirl is one of those like OG 2016 makeup era and I just, I love it. I know there's a Makeup Forever one that's really similar to this, but um, it's kind of one of those things where it's like, if it's not broke, don't fix it, you know? Other uh, little TikTok thing that I've been seeing is girls kind of like, blending their cupid's bow together, like filling it out instead of making it more defined. And I personally really like like an over-exaggerated cupid's bow. I don't like when it looks kind of like, like hot doggy. That sounds so mean, oh my God. It just looks too, I don't know, like, like they're gonna, there's no shape or definition to them. You know what I'm saying? I'm gonna just go, around the cupid's bow i reinforce mine i don't really touch it too much i do kind of overline on the left side though because my lip is a little not symmetrical on that side this is just the perfect like shade of my lip with giving it just a little bit more shape you know i think today let's go in with the rare beauty i love me a good rare beauty this is in the color courage this is like one of the most popular uh colors on her liquid lips and seriously it is so soft and just such a nice like ugh, makes your lips look so smooth and it's such a perfect little like nudie combo while still looking like soft and glam and if you wanted to you totally could put like a super high shine gloss on top of it but to be honest with you i just really like it like this so i am going to leave it this way and i think i think it could use a little bit more blush switch it up a little i'm going with the patrick ta because look at that i'm just gonna do just a Oh my gosh. Okay, but the Barbie pink though is just, oh, it's so cute. I, I love a good Barbie pink blush. And then I'm just gonna go in and kind of like make sure that these lines from the contour are buffed out properly. They don't look like muddy or not sharp enough. Okay, to be honest with you, this look is kind of giving. I wasn't sure what it was gonna give, but I actually, think it's a really cute soft glam slash like perfect little date night if you're into it or that for me it's going to be a photo shoot look. I do also really like this cream uh, blush from Nudie Sticks, Magenta Magic. I mentioned this in my January favorites video, but I kind of think that this little Barbie pink moment that we have going on right now is literally perfect. So I love it. Let's take, let's take the hair out. Dire need to wash my hair, but I... I'm getting it done on Friday, so we're just gonna, we're gonna rock with it. Feel as though 
honestly, this came out better than I expected. And it was kind of fun to do a little beauty video. I just haven't done one in so long. And I know it's only like appealing to a very small portion of my audience. So I appreciate if you did watch this video, if you liked it, if you have any products that you think I would like to try, you know, I'm always down for trying new products. So let me know in the comments below. But that is my little like go-to makeup routine, like looking good in photos, glowy, I don't even know what you want to call this step-by-step -step tutorial. So I hope you enjoyed. I love you guys so much and I will see you in next week's video.